The following program is brought to you by the following Patreon contributors. Become a contributor at patreon.com forward slash databits and by viewers like you. Thank you. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Telefunken was working with a British company called DECA on a mechanical grooved video disc system called TED, Television Electronic Disc. In German, Bild Plattenspiele. Their prototype was a lateral groove system on a disc spinning at 1500 RPM. To increase playback time, the grooves on the disc had to be packed very close together, and they overlapped. Teldex engineers went on to incorporate Thomas Edison's original sound recording system method, which used vertical hill and dale modulation. This way, the grooves could be lined up very close together and provide 10 minutes of playback from an 8-inch disc. TED was ready for sale in the spring of 1975. Picture quality was poor, and at 10 minutes per one-sided disc, a lot of disc swapping was necessary. The medium itself was a floppy plastic foil disc, which floated on air. The pickup used a piezoelectric cartridge with a stylus shaped like the prow of a boat. The stylus moved along the grooves, and the edge of the stylus transmitted electrical pulses through a piezo transducer. In 1978, Matsushita reinvented TED as a 12-inch rigid LP disc called VISC. This system included an entire hour of color motion video on two sides. The groove pitch was 2.3 microns, around 1 25th the pitch of a regular LP record. Matsushita dropped VISC and temporarily backed the ill-fated VHD video system developed by its subsidiary, JVC, shown here on the right. In November 1979, Telefunken unveiled a digital audio version of TED called Mini Disc. Mini Disc was housed in a protective caddy. The 5.3 inch disc rotated at 250 RPM and stored an entire hour of stereo digital audio on each side. A 3 inch micro version of Mini Disc offered 10 minutes per side. Needless to say, it was not well received. TED and Minidisc may have been failures, but Telefunken's direct metal mastering system employed TED's mechanical disc cutting technology to cut metal masters used to make stampers for pressing vinyl LPs. Now that you know a little bit more about the TED format, let's compare it to two other formats that I'm sure you're familiar with. On the right side of your screen here is the CED format, so this is RCA's version of almost the same thing. It is a grooved electronic disc. The difference is the way it was read. This is read by capacitance, and the other one is simply electrical pulses that were laid in or embedded onto the disc. You can see the vertical blinking line going across right there on your screen. Over here is the laser disc. This happens to be a DiscoVision disc. And this one also has that little vertical blinking there. You'll see it on the bottom right of your screen there. So DiscoVision later became LaserVision, which eventually became LaserDisc. And then we have an actual TED disc right here to show off. It's very, very interesting and all of these discs were recorded at constant angular velocity. This one was also abused a bit there. You can see there's a ring right there. That's not supposed to be there. And on the RCA disc, there's quite a bit of wear right there. And trust me, I got it that way. So I'm not sure what the original owner had intended to do there. Here are some original TED sleeves that came with the discs. And welcome to the Data Bits Laboratories, where here we are going to make this machine work with U.S. voltage standards. And you would not believe what it's going to take to get this thing working. 
This is the TP-1005 Telefunken TED player, the one released in 1975. There were two major hurdles that had to be overcome in order to play this thing in the United States. One is voltage. This thing requires 230 volts at 50 hertz. My standard is 110 volts at 60 hertz. You're not going to find a converter at every corner drugstore. You're going to need to import something. So I'll show you what I did. On the video side, I purchased a tuner. This is the 232-STSI Stereo PAL tuner with S-Video output. I actually got video to play through it at one point. It turned out not to be very practical. So in any case, this will not be used for our demonstration. So here's my makeshift TED power station. I found this Stanley portable power station at Goodwill. You can see it right there. I paid $9 for it. In this case, what I needed was for it to convert 110 volts to 12, which it will do. It does have a input there. You can see it on the lower left of your screen. There's where you put in your mains, but then what it output was not enough amps. So what do we do to get our amps? hook up a common car battery. So that's exactly what we did. So we have a 12 volt source there with plenty of amps. Now we've got to convert that 12 volts into 230 volts. This was the first converter that I purchased. It does output 230 volts with the correct plug. Only problem is it doesn't output 50 Hertz. It's really nice. It outputs plenty of power but it just wouldn't work for our demonstration. It would not output 50 Hertz. So big thanks to my friend Tom who helped me figure that out. So what did we use to convert from 12 volts? We use this. This outputs 230 volts AC, 50 Hertz at 150 Watts. So this is a power inverter by Xantrex. It's an inverter 150 and it does the job nicely. Another small hurdle was finding a replacement stylus for this machine. The one that it came with just happened to be bad. Well, and it just so happened that somebody was selling one of these on eBay. So I was able to pick up a brand new cartridge slash stylus for this machine. And it came in this really groovy little jewel box. Here's a close up of the cartridge, which happens to have the needle inside of it. And this is all one piece. These are the only jacks on the back of this thing. There are no audio and video direct outputs, no SCART, no S-Video, nothing, just RF. So what do you do when you need to have a quality video signal from this silly thing? Well, you bypass the RF modulator and hook in your own audio video cables. This is the gigantic RF modulator inside the unit. And right on top here are my cables that I connected. You can see them strapped on there. Those yellow wires there are the original wires that went to the RF modulator. And then all my stuff is soldered right in and it goes down and out the back. With our power and audio visual challenges behind us, now we can hook all this stuff up and show you how it works. So first off, let's go ahead and hook up our car battery terminals here negative on this side, positive on this side. And then down here, here's our plug. Here's our funky German plug. You say, hey, I live in Germany. That's not funky. Well, it is to me because I live in the US. Plug that in here. And let's go ahead and turn this on. We have power. We are ready to go. Oh, and in case you were wondering, the inverter plugs into the 12 volt lighter socket right here on the portable power unit. Here's a quick overview of your player. To turn on the power, you press that button here. You have an indicator light that goes around this ring. You also have an indicator light here on the front. Your controls are play, select, and stop. Select allows you to go to a different place on your video. You have a 10 minute scale, which starts here and goes all the way around to here. 
you thread the disk into the machine, very much like you would put paper in a typewriter. Uh, have any of you actually put paper in a typewriter before? If you have, bravo. All right, so let's see how that part works. Here's our video disc. Let's go ahead and remove the disc from its sleeve. And the disc itself is actually inside another sleeve. So let's insert this sleeve into the slot on the front of the machine. Once it's in there, you'll hear a tiny little click and it is ready to go. To thread the disc into the machine, we're going to turn this dial. So by turning it slowly right around here, the disc is now loaded. Can you believe it? Let's see what made that happen. Getting into the machine is quite simple. There are two release buttons here on the front. We're going to press our two buttons and the hood lifts up just like the hood of your car, revealing all of its beautiful innards. Now there's another thing that you can do. You can lift this up and this reveals all of the uh, player mechanism as well as where the stylus lives. Speaking of our stylus, here it is housed in its protective carriage that's going to move it across the disc. Just to the right and below it is a little disc that spins underneath the stylus after each play. It polishes the needle and allows it to play even better on the next play. If you've ever taken apart a CD player or a Laserdisc player, you'll see a part inside of it that was used even in 1975. This is a magnetic clamp. Your disc comes in and sits on top of that. Then a magnetic clamp comes down, clamps it onto the motor, and off you go being able to play your disc. These are the rollers that pull in the disc as part of the loading mechanism. Remember, the disc is flexible. All right, now with the lid up, let's go ahead and see what this loading is like. We're gonna insert our disc into the front here, in the sleeve, of course. I'm gonna turn my loading knob. Watch right here. You'll see the disc pass this area right here. And it goes down a chute and is lodged right in to the clamp we saw just a second ago. And there it is. Our disc is in place and ready to play. Isn't that picture quality absolutely awful? Some of the discs play a little bit better than others do, but this particular one has a lot of music on it, so it's, it's kind of enjoyable to listen to at least. The rest of the discs are, of course, all in German, and I don't understand German. So now you can see the, the, the color isn't quite as oversaturated as it was a moment ago. And I've looked online and there's other people who have made videos showing off the quality of this uh, particular format. And they all have this weird goofy line going down the side here. So not sure what that equals to. This one probably needs capacitors replaced. You'll see that there's some ghosting going on there as well. So you have the main image and then you have a ghost of the image going on there as well. So uh, very, very peculiar indeed. There is one drive motor in this machine and it drives everything. It's got a giant motor in it. Attached to that motor is that little worm gear that you see there. That worm gear is moving the dial. So the dial indicating there about three minutes of play so far. Go over here, do a little close up of the needle on the record. And again, this is a flexible record containing audio and video signals. The audio is manual. They did not have stereo at that time. What pulls this carriage across is a, a wire that's attached to, uh, to that worm gear there on the receiving end. So it goes down inside of there, 
goes around, flips around, and it goes around this little particular uh, pulley right there. Now I spent about three hours repairing this particular wire because it had gotten all tangled up and wouldn't stay on there. So um, a great pain to get this thing working for sure. Now let's take a look at the one and only special effects feature of this machine, and that is finding a place that you like to play and uh, maybe fast forward rewinding. Hey, it all happens with one magic turn of the wrist. And the disc I'm going to demonstrate this time is this one, probably the biggest soccer match of 1970, also known to those who were there, football. All right, the disc is in. Let's go ahead and hit play. Now, as to why this plays in black and white, I am not sure. On the other one, we had an oversaturation of color. And this one, we have black and white. Der Baumlanger Außenverteidiger Newton, gedankenschnell startet Mallory. Vogts kommt zu spät, der Weltmeister führt mit 1 zu 0. Fünf Minuten bis zur Halbzeit. Die Engländer haben nach wie vor gegen Overath. Schnellinger mit Auf. 44. Minute. Fehlpass Löhr. Die Engländer mit Peters und Schaden. Müllers Schatten Leboon. Wie eine Speerspitze Newton. Alarmstimmung im deutschen Strafraum. Fichtel. The audio quality is really not bad on these. I will say that. The audio is pretty good. Video, eh, it's pretty bad. All right, so let's hit the select button here. I think there was actually a commercial on here that I wanted to show you. If I can find it. I think it was, I think it was right about mid-disc and it interrupted me there. Here we go, this part right here. It wants to play color sometimes. It should click back into play there. Ooh, we got a little glimpse of color there as well. Leute, die kommen aus London. Kaufen hier Carnaby. Carnaby. Really delicious. Und fliegen wieder zurück. Flora Soft. Flora Soft mit Vitamin F und wertvollen Pflanzenölen. Die schmeckt so frisch und ist gesund. Viel Spaß! Deutschland gegen Italien. Italien hat Anstoß, Italiener von rechts nach links. Der Weltmeister von 1934 und 38 hat eine bessere Ausgangsposition. And here's what the unit sounds like when you've removed the disc and it's polishing the stylus. Taking the unit apart is quite simple. There are four screws holding it together on the bottom. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three over here. And last but not least, number four over here. The bottom cover here just pulls off, revealing more beauty, more electronic beautifulness, as you see here. So you can see our gigantic drive motor right there. And uh, there's one circuit board here that uh, unscrews and you can pull it up. There's one right there as well. And it's all there for your viewing pleasure. Isn't it cool? Here's a close-up of the board you saw there in the middle. 
And that, my friends, is the overview of this amazing technological masterpiece known as Television Electronic Disc, brought to you by Telefunken and DECA. I really appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully it was informative to you and you learned a little bit of something. If you did, share it with a friend, leave a comment below, and click that like button as well. And we will see you next time for more great vintage and modern technology. Excuse me while I go and uh, watch me another soccer match. Catch you guys later. Thank you.